Okay, good afternoon. I've been very lucky. Um, my normal house clearance gentleman cleared an antiques shop. Uh, so this, to all intents and purposes, is an antiques clearance hall. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's part one of the clearance hall because apparently the house clearance gentleman I buy off has got a few more trips to come from the place. Now, I wasn't the only dealer there. There was probably 10 or 20 dealers all around him swooping in. I could only get what I could. I spent uh, approximately £120 with him. So everything you see here holds me about £120 in today's video, maybe $150, somewhere over there. Um, so there's no individual prices. £120, $150, $160 is what I owe or what I'm owed. I hope you find it interesting. So I'm going to start off. I don't know where to start. I got stuff everywhere. Yeah. It was a lot of stuff. It sounds a lot of money, £120, uh, £120 um, but I suppose when you actually work it out per item, it's not. So this is the first of the pieces. We have here a pretty much 200-year-old um, glass bowl. Now, this is Georgian Irish. It is beautiful. It has the step mercurial cut down here. So it dates to about 1820. Here, this cut in here is known as strawberry diamond cut in, very typical on the period. And then you have shallow cut in on these diamonds. Scalloped rim, like you see, very typical. Very thick glass, and very heavy, beautiful sound. Good. Star cut pontal with loads and loads of weight, just as you'd expect. I don't know if I can capture it on here. But that's our first piece. Um, now, it has got a chip, unfortunately, but there. But you always see chips on the Irish salts and the Irish bowls. Um, and that's exactly what we got here. It is a beautiful thing. For that little chip, it's neither you nor there. That is still probably a 50 to 75 pound bowl. Beautiful. And from 1820, we come right through to probably 1970s, 60s, 70s. We have a mid-century Italian pottery lion. There you go. Stamped up Italy. And that should give you a clue what it is. It has this original little bung stopper. And on the back... He has a little slot. It is a money box. So we have a nice mid-century or retro Italian lion money box. Hand-painted in good condition. And again, that should be somewhere between sort of 25, 35 pounds, something like that, uh, for a nice Italian pottery money box. So already, we, you know, we're getting up there with just two items. I've had a Victorian... Mochlinware box, Mochlinware being basically transfer printed boxes or anything to be honest with you. They used to do cotton reels, eggs, boxes, you name it. And they would literally be tourist pieces uh, with images on there to sell when people were on holiday. This one is Rothsey Bay. So here's an image there of Rothsey Bay. Um, it's got a little catch on the front there. It's lost the little release bit at the top of the catch. And it has, quite unusually, a glass liner inside. Never had one with a glass top before. It does come out, obviously. And that, it's meant to be there because it's fitted in. You can see there it's actually fitted into the box. Never had a, a box with the glass lid like such in Mochlin way. So a nice little Victorian Mocklin with box in our fortunes um, with the top of that catch. Oh, actually, it's not broke. That's it there. That bends over there. It's actually in good condition. There's nothing wrong with the catch. There's a little bit there that bends over the top to hook onto it. Um, I assumed it would have one of those levers that you pushed in, but to release it doesn't. So it's a nice little thing. Should be somewhere 20 to 30 pounds for a nice box in that condition, especially unusual with a glass liner. Oh, 
Do you know what? I just want to stick to one table and move on. Next we have, let's assume, an early 20th century embossed brass. Do you know, I'd put that down as Art Nouveau with those flowers. So maybe 1920, 1915, 1920. Nice Art Nouveau uh, brass pen tray. So that'd be on your table and you'd have your fountain pens and what have you in there. Nice little thing, nice patina. Um, I've seen these very elaborate, but nice little Art Nouveau. There's no maker's marks on there. You know, not even JSNS, Joseph Sankey or anything like that. If you can get them with fish and things on it by Newland, you're talking big money. But again, that should be £20, no problem at all. Nice little early Art Nouveau pen tray in brass. It's going to be 20 quid. This piece is quite interesting. This, if you look in there, you can see all the carving. Now, if you look at that front, this front section here is a different colour to the rest of it. Can you see the join where it's been, um, hang on, there. It's been actually made in two parts. Can you see that? You can even see it on the outside. So I don't know whether it's had damage over the years or if it was made in out of two pieces. It's really unusual. It has a sort of, I think it's a bird handle. And then the spout with a copper piece coming out. Now look at the patina on it. Now I think, now I'm not 100%, but I think I've had a little look research-wise. Bear with me. Uh... And I think, I, can't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, it's a Kaharal, K-H-A-R-A-L, which is a hand-carved wooden opium water bowl. So, exactly what it is, getting high. Um, so, it, the opium milk or the opium water would be in this, and then you'd serve it like so. Um, Indian, that's what um, I believe they are. I've done a little bit of research on them. Google image did help. I found a few through Google image, so that helped a lot. I think it's 20th century. Um, but yeah, a little opium bowl. Now, I can tell you from the research I've done, they sell it for about 40 to 50 pounds. So that's what that is. I never had one before. I like having things I don't know what they are because it, you know, it forces you to uh, expand and learn. Just the same, I've never had any of this before. This is uh, from Kuala Lumpur, and it is hand-painted lacquerware. So you've got all these beautiful fish uh, painted on the uh, black lacquer. It's in good condition, actually. Nothing on the back, look. Just decorated on the front, but really nicely decorated on three feet, and it still has its original label on there which helps it's not an old piece but it is a very decorative thing and again 20 to 30 pounds shouldn't be unrealistic to achieve on that i've had a little fox now i must admit i was literally i picked up a big tray and i was just rushing around putting stuff in as quick as i could um, by the end of it, I had such a big pile. I had two big crates full of stuff. And I thought, I'm not even going to go through it. I'm just going to go and get a price. Um, here we have Wildlife Series, Purbuck, England, Fox. I have no idea what they're worth. I'm going to have to Google it later on. Uh, but it's part of the parcel. But I like animals. It should be 10, 15 pound. And if not, I'll go brim with a few other animals that they've had on the day because I've had a few animals. But um, I've never sold any of it before. It's the Wildlife Series, stamped to the base. Um, I would think it's probably a tenner for a nice uh, ceramic fox. If we stick with India for a moment. I've had this very heavy, it feels almost Ligman Vita heavy, um, carved wooden Buddha. Look at that colour on that wood. Isn't that beautiful? And it is quite heavy. Beautiful thing. And I would think 
a nice mask like that with that type of weight that quality carving it is nicely carved look at the top um i think that's something like 30 to 50 pounds i'd guess i haven't looked them up again but um i've had this type of masks before um it doesn't feel lightweight like the normal tourist one this is really really heavy um real heavy in fact so it wouldn't surprise me if there is like a ligament vita normally that's black i think but um yeah real heavy dense wood so it wouldn't have been easy to carve either so i like that i've had some middle eastern metalware again i don't know why all of a sudden down in cardiff there's been a flux of now you know middle eastern islamic uh, metalware maybe ottoman metalware that type of thing now we have your a tinned copper bowl but look at the edge on that okay you can see the edge on it now it's got this engraved pattern coming around now it's quite a simple bowl compared to some i've had some recently some damascus stuff where they've engraved it and then in lady with silver and golds um but this seems very simple i would think this may be a domestic use piece but it's got some good age And I would think maybe a bit of Ottoman could even be, I suppose, from Iran or along them lines. Um, it's Middle Eastern, I think, Islamic. With these almost like in the Iznik style. Um, so either way, interesting, very interesting. So I got to look that up, do a bit of research on that. I would think that with the two bowls is going to be up like £50. I've also had two tinned copper bowls with islamic writing inside engraving um engraved patterns and borders all the way around now, these look a lot newer to be honest with you than that incomparable in comparison so these bowls look probably 20th century where i think that one it's probably 19th century looking at it um but this one look at, you can see the symbols better on this one coming around the inside i don't know if they're like ottoman empire or something like that no they're really interesting so i need to do a bit of research on them but to be honest with you for the large bowl on those two i don't think i'm going to achieve less than sort of 40 50 pounds but i'm not going to put them up for sale until i know what they are and know the value of them I've had a couple of boxes, leather covered boxes. This is the first. Nice little tooled leather, gilded and tooled leather. And inside, I open them up, and it is a stamp box. Look at that. A little leather stamp box. And it's, you know, it's a stamp box because it's curved sloped sides or inside the things. So when you scoop and pull your stamps out, was it? That's at least what I assume it is. So that's the first. Um, let's say that's about 15 pounds, something like that. 15, 20 pound again. This one, not so much. I'm not sure what the use of this one is. Um, down is genuine calf leather, Florence. That's what is gilded on the base. And we have a nice calf leather box. I'm not sure, is this like maybe a snuff box? Cigarette box, snuff box. Could be a snuff box. It's quite big for a snuff box, but it could be a snuff box. It's a nice thing. Depending on the use, again, could be around the same sort of money. It could be more. I, I, I will actually research everything tidy before I put it up for sale. Um, so things could go up or down slightly in value, uh, depending. I'm just giving rough estimates at the moment. Um, I managed to pick up quite a few pieces of Chinese. Um, especially some 18th century Chinese porcelain. Now, this is a modern Chinese cloisonne bowl. Now, how do you know it's cloisonne? Very simple. Do you see the lines? They are actual wire. And in here, it's all outlined with wire. And they would apply the wire to the bowl, then fill the paste, the glass paste in, and then it'd be fired. If it was enamel, it wouldn't have the wire work running through the design. 
So a nice piece, this bit of Chinese clay sony has the original label. So I would assume probably 1960s, I guess. Something like that. That's what that label strikes me as. Maybe a 60s piece, maybe 70s. So a nice little Clasone bowl. Again, not fortunes. You're talking 20 to 30 pounds retail on that one. Do you remember that massive, and I mean massive, 12 kilo brass Indian brass bowl on elephants I had? Well, this is the normal type you find. <laughs> If I put that side by side with our big brass one, honest to God, the quality is just stands out totally different. So we have a little stand base there with um, three elephants kneeling down. This one is in copper rather than uh, brass, but the looks of it, it looks copper to me. A coppery bronze finish to it. So you've got the base there, and then you have a nice engraved pattern coming around, and this almost petal edge is lifted up. So that's quite pleasant. This one's definitely, you know, second half of the 20th century, in my opinion, a uh, tourist piece. And again, 20 to 30 pounds. When you compare the other one, I put up for 250 and thought that was cheap because they were selling from two to 600 to 20 to 30 pounds. That's the difference. But still, it's another 20, 30 quid item, and it's a nice item. This is one of my favorites of the day, this one. We have a hanging oil lamp. It's not any oil lamp you'd uh, probably recognize, but this is an Islamic Middle Eastern oil lamp. You put your oil in there, your flame here. Um, real nice thing. Not sure what that is supposed to be at the back. Do you know what? It looks Iranian. Definitely from them people at the back. They're people. Now this would hang. Look at that. Look at the hook. Just hanging like that. And there's your little oil lamp. A beautiful thing. I think this is like 50 to 70 pounds for this oil lamp. I've seen oil lamps like this. A lot more modern. Um, this one is hammered. You can actually see the hammer marks where it's been hammer made, um, handmade. And as I say, I've seen modern ones of these selling for 20, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. This one's got good age. It's Middle Eastern and it's complete with this bracket. Very rare you find them with this hanging bracket. So yeah, I think 50 to 70 pounds for that's very fair. Again, I'll do the research on them, but I think that's a fair estimate. We all love Kitchenalia. This is around the same period as the Mochlinware box. This is a Victorian um, little egg timer. Made the same sort of wood as you find on the Mochlinware boxes. And we have a little glass egg timer in the center. Beautiful little thing. It's not worth much, it's probably worth 10, 10, 12 quid, something like that. But it was going in the box either way. This is a really varied haul. Um, I have so much variety, it's unbelievable. I have a set of Conway Stewart pens, a pen or pencil maybe, I'm not sure which. In this original box, look at that. Now I'm hoping they're gold or roll gold because I haven't even looked. I'm now unpacking the boxes. Conway Stewart UK. And they don't say roll gold, they don't say gold, they don't say gold plated. Just say Conway Stewart UK. That's a pencil. So that must be the pen. Um, at the moment, we're going to assume gold plated. Right, again, I'm going to do some research on those. But 20, 30 pounds at the moment, no problem at all for a pair of Conway Stewart in the original box. But it wouldn't surprise me if they rolled gold 
uh, and end up 50, 60 pound. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. So a nice Conway Stewart pen set there, pen pencil. I bought some precious metal. I bought a candlestick, um, nice size candlestick, but it was broke and split and everything. And whilst I was down there, I was actually at the car boot sale selling. So while I was down there, I ripped it apart. <laughs> I was there and I was pulling and pulling and pulling and I just ripped it apart. It was fully hallmarked and that returned me 54 grams of silver. So silver is around 45, 50 p a gram, something like that, depending on where you go. So let's just assume 50 p a gram for argument's sake. It's 25 quid. There's another 25 pound back there just in scrap metal to go in my box and never be melted. <laughs> so yeah, 25 pounds worth of silver. This is pretty. We have a very, very pretty, beautiful shape. Keith Ness, glass paperweight. Signed to the base, C-A-G. There you go, which is Keith Ness glass. And a very pretty little paperweight. It's not fortunes, it's 10 or 15 pounds. And that's on a good day. This I had to test. I've te acid tested it. It felt silver. It looked silver. It was good quality. Unfortunately, a silver plate on copper, and it's got some like velvet lining on the inside. But yeah, nice. Do you hear that clip? It closes lovely too. Nice little thing actually. Um, little I don't know. Just a little box, snuff box, pill box. Just really nice. Um, yeah, so 10, 12 quid. If it had been silver, it had been 30 to 50. But it's sort of 10, 12 quid. Next couple of pieces are not everybody's taste. However, they were bought. They'll be put in the video. We have an antique carved ivory fan. Now, I would assume this is Chinese. It's in good condition. And before you say it's, all the petals are falling apart, the only thing that's damaged is the ribbon. The ribbon is worn with the probably the last hundred plus years of age. All the ivory is in good condition and carved beautifully. Now, I'm not going to replace this ribbon. I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm just going to sell the fan as is. Um, but an antique Chinese ivory fan, PS design. I've sold a few ivory fans, and I always achieve sort of, depend on how well they're carved, anything from, from 75 to 150. Now, I've had them with Chinese villages carved into them, and they're up at like 150 pounds. But I would think this one is comfortably 75 to 100 pounds uh, for an ivory fan in this condition. It is an antique one. It's a beautiful thing. All the um, panels seem to be in good condition. A couple of little tiny flea bites on the rim, you know, as you see by there, but that's nothing. Normally, part of this is missing inside, or you'll have one or two petals snapped. The only real damage is the ribbon, and that can be replaced so easy. So that's the first. So I'm probably going to put 100 on it and see what offers I get or see if it sells at 100. Then we have this one, which is a tortoise shell inlaid with, I think, looking at that, very fine silver. So you have tortoise shell inlaid with silver. Now, tortoise shell and ivory can be dealt in providing this pre-1947. However, they have now made it totally illegal to deal in antique elephant ivory. Elephant ivory, though, is pure white. Um, this, I do not feel, is elephant ivory. This, to be honest, it was quite a yellow ivory, probably a walrus ivory, looking at that. So we have two fans. Now, I've looked at the tortoiseshell fans. Now, this is in beautiful condition. And believe it or not, I've seen people asking whilst doing my research down there, 
asking as much as £600 online for a fan like this. There's no damage. The only flaw to it is, if you look there at the front, it's got a little tortoiseshell cap on the back. It's lost the tortoiseshell cap over the handmade nail. And there is a handmade nail as well, or handmade pin. Now, I see it about 100, 125 same as the ivory fan in my eyes. £100 is what I'd be set asking for this tortoiseshell fan. So, beautiful thing. Again, not everybody's taste being ivory and tortoiseshell. Next, I had a celluloid fan. Now, these two ends are loose from the main fan for some reason, but other than that, it's in lovely condition, and it's got a nice pattern running through the celluloid. I presume it's celluloid anyway, so it feels bakelite or celluloid. Now, it's got a maker's mark. I haven't looked it up yet. It's just so hard to read. Oh, right, I can read that. Huh? Whether I can pronounce this another thing. G E S E T Z L. Let's have a look here. G E S. G E S E T E T Z L. So it is J M Gazetchel. Can't even pronounce it. Fa handheld fans. Um, I can't. It's, it's too bad. It is. Well. <laughs> Believe it or not, the company must still be going because I'm hitting on images and it's pulling up images of electric fans now. So probably mid-century, 1940s at the guess, 1950s, a uh, little celluloid fan. You can see there's a little bending on the uh, couple of petals. That can be straightened out. All you've got to do is just put it there, put something heavy on it for a while and leave it just flatten up. Um, so, yeah, that's a nice little fan there. Depending on the make, I'm gonna to have to do some research on it. You know, celluloid, 20, 30 pounds, something like that again. This I bought because I absolutely loved it. It's something and nothing at all, to be totally honest with you. It's probably worth a few pounds. But I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And it is, if you look at all the different layers, it's like an agate. So it's polished stone, maybe an agate of some description, and it's a swan. But I loved all the different colours running through it. You can't see it very well here on the computer, but it's such a beautiful thing. Really is. Beautiful little swan. I chucked that in because I absolutely loved it. Somebody took the time to carve the agate in the form of a swan. It's probably worth a fiver, but um, I'll either keep it or I'll chuck a tenner on it or something like that, and it'll be a little cheap curio to go on the website. That is a little curio. I think that is a 16th or 17th century small ball cannon ball. Looking at the way it's made. The later ones are finished off much better. It's quite roughly made. But I think it's a 16th, 17th century. It's got good patina. It's got the rust in the right places. It's um, It's hollow. It's not solid. So, yeah, it's interesting. So, they're not worth fortunes. I have Googled them. They sort of anything sort of from £30 to £50 for a nice cannonball of that size, if it's original and if I can identify what it's come out of. So, a bit of fun going to be identifying that. But that is probably a 300-year-old cannonball. That's what I see that as. A well loved one too. Something that's been waxed and oiled over the years. So interesting little thing. 
Go on, we going up to sale till I figure out what is out of. This is nice. This is a paper mache, lacquered paper mache, hand painted box. Now, I would assume probably Kashmir, India, something like that. Look at that. You've got all the animals on there. And on the side there. Now, if you look here, look at that. It can only go on one way to make sure you get the pattern right. So, to make sure you get the pattern right, they've cut a V into the box and fitted it. So, it can only go on one way. You can't put it on. It just will not close. Only closes there to make sure the pattern is perfect all the way around. You've got all these different animals running around. There's a tiger chasing the stag. It's all stags, different stags and does and tigers. But a nice thing. Hand painted and again, it's not fortunes. It's for all our work, paper mache, black lacquered, hand painted, it's still only talking around 20, 30 pounds. For a nice thing. These are novel. These are little mother of pearl handled fruit knives. Now you get a you used to collect or people used to buy a lot with the solid silver fruit knives. You'd have a silver blade as well. These are stainless steel blades. They're not silver blades. Just check in that they're not silver blades. They don't feel silver. So two stainless steel blades and two mother of pearl handles. They're little fruit knives. And these are going to go on cheap. These are going to be just a little curio for the website for probably a tenner for the pay. But a nice little curio. They're in good condition. I like the way this one is done with a point at the end. Uh, I don't know a lot about dollies, but we have a little antique porcelain doll. Shiny small miniature doll. I know hardly anything about these. Um, if they're signed on the back of the neck, I normally research them when I buy them and buy them based on quality. But as I've said, everything that we cleared today came out of an antique shop, so I didn't really need to be that fussy. It was just pick it up if I liked it and put it in a box. And believe me, the amount of stuff that came out was shocking. The amount of dealers walking away with crates and boxes was unbelievable. So, yeah. Again, just a little curio antique doll, 10 or 15 pounds. It's probably a doll collector out there now saying that's a rare one, or it's a very common one. I don't know. Now, this is probably 1940s, and the reason I say that is we have the original Baker Light light fitting, and we have a serpentine, Cornish serpentine, very heavy, polished serpentine stone uh, lamp base and um, this is is it Cornwall at least Cornish serpentine comes from I think it's that area anyway if I remember right and we got a real nice lamp base now I am going to take off the Bakelite fit in I may even sell the Bakelite fit in separately to be honest though because they do sell and do your sausage come on if I undo that, I think the wire there is twisting and stopping me. Do it. So if I undo the wire, there we go. There, ha there you go. It has a nice brass fitting inside underneath. So I can take off the Bakelite fitting, have a brass fitting mounted, a real nice brass one, with some nice wire with maybe an inline switch. And then you're talking, that's probably a 45 or 50 pound uh, serpentine lamp. It was going to cost probably a tenner for the fit in and the the plug, the switch, the wire. That's going to be up a tenner, no problem. Um, but then you're talking 45, 55 pounds for a real nice serpentine lamp. Or I may just take the top off or even sell it just as I haven't decided yet. It depends how much time I get if I want to invest the time in having it rewired. But a couple of drinking glasses. 
this one here, a little Victorian star cut with a hollow stem, which is nice. And as a friend of mine informed me this week, um, I didn't actually realize this hollow stem here was to actually catch the sediment. So you'd fill it with your wine and that, and then all the sediment would sink down and it'd fill the stem and then you could drink your wine. Nice sound, nice glass, nice foot. So it's a nice thing. Um, with the hollow stem, I think that's a 15 or 20 pound glass. I did have a Mammoth A-Twist, Georgian Mammoth A-Twist glass. Um, it's not available at the moment for filming. I've sent it off to a friend to look at, but it's a really, really, really nice. A-Twist glasses, 1750, 1760. Um, A-Twist come before the cotton twist. So you had the Mercurial A-Twist before the colored twists. Uh, so 1750, 1760, somewhere over there. Uh, normally they come six inches. This one is like that, 10 inches, and the top of it has been cut down, unfortunately. But it was unbelievable quality. The foot was huge. Unbelievable. So that'll come in a video another day, but at the moment it's been sent away for someone to look at it for me. So, yeah, that's a nice little drinking glass there. And I've also had this one here. Now, it's got a wonky, and it is wonky wonky rim um it's out of shape polished pontal so it's, they've ground it smooth and then polished it it's got tumps away and that's a little shot glass um or toasting glass if you like you need to give her a clean you can see how stinking dirty it is i need to give her a clean i think it's a 20th century one i don't think it's a victorian one but um nice hand-blown antique measure a uh, shot glass or toasting glass with a big heavy foot so there's that one then we have this which i think again is sort of persian along them lines middle eastern persian along them lines something like that it's got an applied spout the spout's been applied by there like that look at it Just a really interesting thing. It's got an original patina on it. Nobody's polished or cleaned that. It's got a nice color to it. Probably 20th century. Um, a little ewer, water ewer maybe. But it also comes with two cups. Now, that's what the underneath looks like. So it came with two little cups. So, quite interesting. To be honest, I'm probably going to have to ask for a bit of help on this one. Um, either that will end up, if I can't get help, I'll end up selling just as a Middle Eastern, Persian, Iwa, bronze or brass Iwa. And it's probably 30, 40 pounds, something like that. Lovely thing. As you can see, some really nice things come out from... Uh, this place I've had a nice mid-century 60s 70s again but it's quite translucent in the light uh, green onyx um, jewelry casket jewelry box with the brass fittings again now, I've had a few of these as you know of late uh, most of them have been Italian this one probably is as well, to be honest with you. That's where they seem to all come from. But it's no damage on there. It's actually a nice example. And they've been ranging sort of from 25 to 50, 60 pounds. No problem at all for the Onyx boxes. I've actually sold a few. I bought loads and sold a few of them. So they are selling. People are buying them. So I'm quite pleased with that. So that's a nice little onyx box. I've had a few candlesticks. These ones here are Georgian. A pair of uh, 18th century brass candlesticks. Now the downside is they're not in brilliant condition. 
and this one there has been soldered around the base there it's also been soldered underneath the base this one soldered again there and soldered around the top there so they've had repairs done to them but again pay candlesticks at that age up and, and stem isn't quite sitting quite right together there um so whoever put it back together i don't think we sat this square when they put it on it's slightly off but a pair of candlesticks this age um yes they got repairs but they're still going to be probably 30 quid the pair no problem at all i've no idea i haven't been tallying up how much i've made off this lot hopefully somebody can tell me <laughs> i think i've done it right i saw these and these had a feel to me of being very simple trend shot now i could be wrong but all they are is a flat disc with a cylinder on top but they feel like a shell they're not hugely thick but they just have a feel of being shot about them they're very very simple made somebody just wanted a pair of candlesticks or candle holes to clean just push them out there's no markings no military markings no makers markings no nothing on them but how being funny look at the way and age on these now that brass looks lacquered i don't think it is or isn't i have to try and clean it might not be actually that bit looks lacquered though top bits look lacquered um so i don't know whether that have a bearing on whether they were trench art or anything but anyway interesting pair of candlesticks very very simply made soldered it could even be just somebody just knocked them up in a garage but they were interesting enough for me to put them in my box even just as let's just say scratch built at someone's garage then if you like um they're gonna be 10 or 15 pound for the pay sticking with um metal weight and candlesticks we have this pie crust edge ruffled rim if you like whatever you want to call it copper tray with spike and that would be for stabbing into your candlestick to hold your candlestick there again no makers marks of any kind it's got age look at the patina and the color on that copper it's got age so it's probably first quarter first half of the 20th century just an unusual little thing again i don't think it's much value it's 10 to 15 pounds but again i was putting it in and we had this this is quite a pleasant little preserve pot no idea who it is a minute really unusual shapes i don't know whether that could be is it no i thought then maybe that was to hold the lid while you were using it or maybe a maybe a spoon would have gone on there i don't have the spoon doesn't seem to be any damage to it was it by it looks to be like shorter or something like that hand painted i think it's my art and son which would make it art deco so we'd have a little art deco my art and son preserve pot i need to double check the mark but i think that's my art looks like to me hand painted my art i'll get it off the serial number of 1650 is that 1650 yeah it looks 1650 so again 10 to 20 pounds at the moment something like that for a nice preserved pot then i've had a selection of chinese now every piece of this is damaged however some beautiful things first of all i have a 19th century canton canister now this is the earlier 
of this Canton um, stuff. It's Famille Rose, but it's, um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. You've got Rose Medallion and Rose Mandarin, and this is, it's Rose Medallion because you've got the different medallions, but Rose Canton, I'm trying to think, I just can't think. Is one for the people, and there's another with just birds and flowers. I think this comes under the Mandarin part, and I'm not sure because of the people, but it could be a different one can't think now they've glued the lid on because the lid has been cracked clean in half so they've actually glued the lid into place which is sad but this is the earlier earlier of them um started i think it was about 1840 1850 but originally it had gold in the hair and earrings and adornments things like that which this has got little gold highlights in the hair and that's what you're looking for on this stuff so there you go there's the base so that's the first piece now if the lid was in good condition you know you'd be talking a bit of money but um i don't think i'm gonna be selling any of the chinese i'm gonna be keeping it myself so it, the value on this doesn't matter this is my favorite bit of the chinese to be honest with you, and it's damaged to hell and back This is a simple Qinglong period, so 18th century, but second half of the 18th century, so about 1760, something like that. Uh, spearhead border, Qinglong porcelain plate. Now you've got the peacocks there. Take note of the rocks, the square rocks and the colours. It's absolutely stunning. Now, as you can see, it's been broken quite a bit. That crack there runs all the way across and down there. See it there? I gotta run some glue on it to hold it together because I'm probably gonna keep it and just enjoy it. Look at that. Look at that staple work. I have no idea what that dark L is. Maybe that's the dealer who uh, whose stall it was in. I don't know. Um, but beautiful, beautiful 18th century, 1760, Ching Long period porcelain plate. I just love that pattern. I really do. Pattern is beautiful. So I'm probably going to just run some glue over the crack um, and put it on a wall and just enjoy it. And I absolutely love it. So there's that one. I do sell Chinese porcelain, um, but I particularly like period porcelain with animals. I want to get a range of the porcelain with the animals because of I want to get a sense of how they're all drawn. That's why I said to you to take note of them rocks. The rocks are very, very stylized for the Qinglong period. They're almost square blocks. They're not very realistic rocks at all. And sometimes you have fungus growing on them, things like that. So, yeah, beautiful little plate. Unfortunately damaged again. Damaged to hell, actually, but uh, it is what it is. Then we have... An 18th century Qing Long period punch bowl. This the two pieces off the rim that are missing by there. So I can put them back in and it'll be complete. However, it has also got that damage there. Hang on, if I can turn it on there, you'll see it there. See the damage cracks. But that is a Qing Long period, very large bowl. Um, now I've seen these with a variety of patterns. And they start cracking again in the oh, cracking hairline into the base does go through. But again, you're talking same sort of period, 1760. So I am probably gonna just put this um wait, put this back together. There you go, that goes there, and the other one goes by there. Put it back together and super glue and clean, and I'm just gonna put it on a shelf and I'm just gonna probably enjoy it. If I was to sell it, even in this condition, I would think that's a £50 bowl. No problem at all. The plate's probably £20 to £30 in that condition. And the canister's probably £20 to £30 in that condition. I also had this, which is... I would say it's 19th century Japanese hand-painted porcelain. But it's a particularly nice one. 
I love all the different panels. Now it has got a chip. Um, it's nowhere near as bad as the Chinese stuff. There you go. There's a chip by there. It doesn't go all the way through. Um, it's nowhere near in as bad a condition as the Chinese porcelain. But again, Japanese stuff doesn't pull the money the Chinese pieces do. This one's going straight up for sale, even with that chip. Very, very typical classic Japanese back. And a bowl like this is going up for about 35, 40 pounds, 45 pounds, something like that, even with the chip. It's a nice little bowl. And then I had this, which I think is very, 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 very modern. <laughs> very modern. Chinese hand painted porcelain bars. Very modern in my opinion, but very, very decorative. Lots and lots of flowers. Here's the base. So yeah, pure white. Don't think it has any age at all. I tell you what, this wouldn't surprise me if this is duck egg porcelain or eggshell porcelain rather, because it is literally translucent. I can see all the way through it. See my fingers running up and down, looking down through it. So I'm gonna do a bit of research on it. I'm not gonna just chuck it on and sell it and just assume it's a modern piece. I am gonna check, but that's my feeling at the moment. It's a modern piece. But it is extremely thin and you can see through it so could even be the eggshell but it's nicely hand painted i also had this little polar bear no bear is it polar bear or bear looks a bit like a polar bear you know maybe just a bear no i haven't researched it yet um can't even see it i'm blind Branscombe, china england uh bear it'll probably be going with the other animal wherever that's gone yeah I'll probably put the fox and the bear on together. To be honest, you probably 10 or 15 pounds for the two. Um, they're not really worth a lot of money, in my opinion, but I will double check them before I sell them. I've had this. Now, you know, I love my Chinese um, works of art and Korean works of art and things. And um, we have an old Sotheby's catalog Ch fine Chinese and Korean ceramic and works of art. Um, it would have been nice if it was more color but it does show you a lot of the patterns and you know prices and asking prices and things like that um so that'll go in my reference books so a little free reference book there and i had this i don't know what that is we'll look at that in a minute this is quite nice this is, is it hand card? Yeah, it looks to be a hand colored engraving of a ground. Dated 1812. And it wouldn't surprise me if it is that period. Now you can see the plate marks. Uh, you can see the plate marks running around it. You come across there and down. So you can see the plate marks. It's a beautiful image. There you go. Republished by Edward on Bond Street, 1812. And it also signed. Now this one is signed and published October the 15th. Now that doesn't make sense because it's got in the corner here, it has got published October the 15th, 1798 it looks like. But down here it's got 1812. So... I'm not 100% at the moment what's going on, and it's signed on that side as well. Hewitt in 
and that's the artist so there's the artist there who had something so a bit of research needed but i tell you what wouldn't that frame up beautiful if you love greyhounds look at that now that could be a bit of money that could be up 40 50 pound once it's framed up hand colored engraving um all I gotta do is find out who the artist is and find out if that is period no. What I will say it's old paper, but it's not laid paper. And with the laid paper, you can see the lines running through it where it's been laid on like the mesh. Again. Bit of research needed but that is a such a pretty hand colored engraving um really really nice so that may get framed up and sold on in a frame to be honest with you like it may be worth me putting 30 or 40 50 pound into a real nice frame and chucking decent money on it if it is of that period so a bit of research needed find out it could be a good artist Now this, somebody has taken a photograph. That's what they were asking for the photograph. That makes sense. Don't. I'll show you the photograph now. Um, this tablet, it, Middleton School in Memoriam, this tablet is erected by past and present scholars and staff in memory of all boys of this school who fell in the Great War of 1914 to 1918. And you have a photograph of a tablet that's been erected in the school. Someone was asking 35 pounds of this. It is a nice photograph of a horrible event. And it was dated 1920. So they obviously, at the end of the World War in 1918, they, all the people who were lost from the school, the tablet was made and then the photograph was taken. And that's what this is, a 1920 photograph of a tablet of people who lost, lost their lives in the First World War. I don't see her at £35, but then again, I could be totally wrong, but I see that, like five or ten pound curiosity. Um, but what do I know? How about anything else I want to share with you from this haul? I think that is it, and it is yet again another one hour special. I am sorry for people who like a short video, but um, at the moment, I didn't want to break this haul up because of what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed, um, but I'm hoping you've enjoyed anyway. Let me know what you think. Maybe you can help with a few of these pieces because I've done zero research on any of them at the moment. Um, and obviously, if you've got a favorite, let me know. I always appreciate the comment and a like, and if you can share, fabulous. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications, and you'll get to told then when I put videos out, which is quite regular. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye for now.